In today's video, we are gonna wrap up this series on BMS design for data centers. And we'll talk about redundant power supplies and we'll finish off with alarms, which doesn't sound very interesting, but is one of those things that always slips through the net for mission critical facilities. So in phase six, half making this up actually, in phase six, I am, um, I'm thinking about power supplies. So all those other things we did for the last few weeks, I don't worry about that. I'm doing today in my calendar, I'm working on for two hours on the power supply of my controllers. Now for the last two critical jobs I've done, I've been quite lucky that the BNS company, their field controllers supported 24 volts DC. So this worked, this won't work with 24 volts AC controllers. But I think a lot of BNS companies, I think their controllers support AC or DC. So if you have a controller that only supports 24 volts AC, this won't work. You have to think something else. So what I did was we've got UPS 1 and UPS 2, the two big electrical UPSs. And then in my plant room, I put a box over here called UPS 1 power supply, UPS 2 power supply. And I get a 240 volt power feed into each one of these boxes. So in this box, 240 volts comes in through circuit breakers, transformer, and then a DC power supply, and then three circuit breakers in this example. Circuit breaker one goes to that chiller one control cabinet. Circuit breaker two, chiller two cabinet. Circuit breaker three, chiller three cabinet. In this box, the same thing, 240 volt power supply, circuit breakers transformer, the DC power supply, the three circuit breakers, one to each panel. So when you get to chiller one panel, there is a UPS one fed 24 volt DC power supply coming in and a UPS two 24 volt DC power supply coming in to the panel. And then you can buy these, I call it a 24 volt DC diode module. They're probably not called that. You can buy these things. I think Schneider Electric make like a nice DIN rail clip-on proper industrial product. So you put 24 volts DC in here, 24 volts DC in here. It has diodes inside it to deal with feedback, whatever it is. And then you get the one um, 24 volt DC power supply coming out to your controller. So in that panel, now yes, if you lose the 24 volt DC diode module, if you lose that, that panel loses power. Um, but remember, I don't care about anything getting lost in that box. If I lose that power supply for chiller two, I'm just gonna, as I said last week, I'm just gonna rotate the whole of chiller two and the control panel. I'm gonna rotate the whole thing out and bring the whole standby chiller in, the standby pump and standby control panel with its healthy 24 DC diode module. So in each of those boxes, I'm not concerned about things failing because it's the N plus, we followed mechanicals N plus one. But I have two very reliable DC power supplies to each one of these panels. The second data center, I went a step further and I actually did that to everything, even to fan coil units. So in the battery room, we had duty standby fan coil units, I had a box for each fan coil unit, two power supplies. In the room next door, we had the UPS one and the room next door we had UPS two, the big UPSs and I had a pair of duty standby fan coil units in those rooms. I gave them all power supply. So that box, it has more than one 24 volt DC circuit breaker in there going out to this whole thing. So that's what I did there. It worked really well. That's a really nice redundant power supply. Um, also what I did was, which is probably not necessary, is if I lost that transformer in UPS1 power supply box, you know, I'd have a reliable, a reliable supply from UPS2 power supply box. That's ticking the box, we've met that requirement. But I'm always feeling a bit uneasy because even though that's completely compliant to N plus one, I still don't like it that I'm running on my only one supply while I've got to wait to buy another transformer. And that could take a couple of weeks with you know fee proposals and purchase orders and lead time. So what I've been doing is um, specifying that, it, that that box actually has two transformers in it. One screwed down the back plate, it's not doing anything. And in this box, a second transformer screwed down the back plate, it's not doing anything. It's just there that when that one fails and I'm using this supply, N plus one, tick in the box, I just roll along there, isolate it. 
you know, pull the transformer out, you know, just you know, it's done in a few hours. Again, not exactly required for M plus one, that's even more, but it's a simple thing to put another transformer in there. Even if you just have one in there and not one in there, at least you have a spare one you can move around or leave in this box in the panel. It's a few things to do there. So that is the power supply. But again, the main point I'm talking to you about here, it's not so much the DC, DC diode module stuff. It's more what I'm trying to get across here is that you have to think about it. You have to have on, on your, your, your notes or your process that you follow, there's got to be an entry that says, think about the power supply to everything. Controllers, actuators, the whole thing. Just If you just remember to sit down and think about it, you will fix it. You will solve those problems. It's only a problem when you're trying to do the whole design in three days or four days or five days or whatever it is, and you, you, you bash through a process of work in one shot, you're not giving yourself enough time to think about it. And that's why I said for phase one, when I get the job, I just start phase one immediately. I just find two, three, four hours that, that week just to talk to everybody, check the brief, print the drawings out, bash in my rough first phase of the points list because you've got to start as soon as you can and take the time to think about it. It's not a commercial office where you just bash them out, you know, like for like. With data centers, you need that extra layer of thought process. So the last thing is phase seven, alarms. It doesn't sound very exciting, alarms. That's not the data center, you know, N plus one exciting stuff, alarms. We are very bad at alarms. Um, and it starts off in commercial office land because what happens is we, we, we build this whole design of this project and we do point schedules and valve schedules and damper schedules and graphic schedules and function descriptions and we do all this work but in our design phase there usually isn't a design component for the alarms and trends. So usually like two or three weeks before handover the BMS engineer will sit down and start creating alarms and open up the chiller page and create some alarms and the HU pages. I almost said boilers, but this is a data center discussion. It shouldn't be boilers. Um, so what we should be doing, and what happens is that we, we forget to, to put those alarms. If you don't use follow a, a robust process for your alarm handling, you will make mistakes. You, in a commercial office, you will forget to put an alarm on that sump pump in basement three. This little panel, Q completely is not on your radar. And um, the basement will flood, there'll be no alarm, it's the end of the world. The same thing applies with data centers. I've done jobs before where we're doing integrated systems testing on a weekend. We're all down there and we're doing heavy stressful testing. We're turning off power supplies and there's generators and we're failing UPSs or we're failing crack units and we're all stressing out. And in the middle of all that craziness, I shout out to the facility manager, hey, facility manager, did you get that alarm on your phone? What? That alarm on your phone? And he picks his phone up and he goes through it and there's no alarm there. And then I ask the BMS guy, where's the alarm? And it's like, oh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot that one alarm. You know, there's, you know, there's, there's 200 points, so there's a thousand points here. I forgot that one alarm. I'll, I'll fix that straight away. That happens. Like it happens all the time. Um, so this is what you need to do. When you're doing your points list and you've got a tab for each piece of mechanical equipment or system. And in your, in your points list, you've got you know, all the points and the part numbers, and you've got a tick box there in your commissioning section. You, yes, I've commissioned it, tick, 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 and the commission technician's, um, his name, and the date you did it, you did that, that's your commissioning sheet. Just add a column there called alarms, like it's really easy. And as you go through it, you just tick the alarms. Yes, 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 alarm, yep, 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 and your yep, 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 alarms. And um, what is the category? Low, medium, high, urgent, critical, maintenance, the categories in there. And while you're there, create another column called trend. Yes, 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 yes. What is the period? 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, COV, change of variable, and a column for, called history. Yes, 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 yes. That means that these 24 hour trends will be uploaded to the server for long-term storage. Just do that, like it's really easy. It'll take you nothing to do that. Yep, 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 yep. No, yes, no. And then when the consultant reviews the point schedule, they can see what your design intent is for alarm handling and for trends. 
if the client's independent reviewer looks at it, they will see, yep, yep, yep. Somebody might say, hey, actually, hold on a sec, guys, like this is a great list, but we also want alarms here, and we also want trends here. Yep, no problem. Then when the software programmer builds the database and the rights of software programming and the graphics and the binding, spends a few hundred hours doing that, they just build the proper, agreed, and approved alarms and trends. There's, there's no surprises at the end. It, it takes no extra time to do it the proper way. It just means you've got to plan it up front. Because what happens is, I'll be sitting there and we won't get the, the, the alarm won't pop up on the screen and I'll say, oh, where's the alarm? Okay, I forgot. The next question that comes out of my mouth will be, which points have alarms on and which points don't have alarms on? That's what's gonna get asked. Like every time there's a bugger up with alarming, that's the first question. And a lot of BMS systems can't export an alarm schedule afterwards. Some can, but uh, lots can't or most can't, I, I think. So that's a difficult question to answer because now you usually got to go and, and manually open up the points, look at the alarm definition and write it down. So it is we, we should be creating alarm and trend schedules for BMS systems on every project. You're doing an aquatic center down the road, aged care living, B-grade buildings, council offices, you know, 50-story commercial offices, hospitals, data centers. We need alarm and trend schedules from now on, please, guys. So, yep, that's that. Uh, again, I hope you guys learned something. You got some value, got a few ideas. As I've said a few times before, if nothing else, develop a process that you follow when you're doing complex projects. Ideally, also for commercial offices, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Because you will forget very obvious things. But if you set yourself a task, today I'm thinking about my power distribution or the network. I'm thinking about that today for a couple of hours just before lunch. It's in my calendar. There it is. You will remember things and you'll think of things and you'll get better and better and better at this. All right. If you've got some value, please like and subscribe. Um, you know, there's not millions of people, BMS people in the world. So... YouTube will never make money out of YouTube in the BMS industry. But like today is Sunday. I got a new car. I want to be driving my car around and I can't because I'm sitting here doing these videos. So when you guys like and subscribe, I feel good about it. I feel like I'm making a difference and I get motivated to create more of these videos. So please like and subscribe or uh, follow me on LinkedIn. Have a good week and I will see you next week.